your talents, your artistic talents, as they emerged and grew stronger throughout high school, did it make you feel, well, maybe I can go on and I can be a painter? I don't think they, those talents were that evident to me then. Even though the, uh, I, I was called on all of the time by my teachers to do all these things, it almost became work for me. And when it becomes work, you know, it's not quite as inviting. So my choice when I left the mountains, as somebody said, when I tumbled off of those mountains and came all the way down to Kings Mountain to get on the train to come to Washington, D.C. to attend Howard University, even though I had made an application, um, was to be a, history of t uh, a, a teacher of history and to minor in art. Now, how did your parents feel about this whole idea? They were just so delighted that I wanted to get an education, that they just encouraged every moment of it. They didn't figure in the art equation. They just said, well, he likes to draw. And I had a number of little drawings around. And they were very pleased to show those when people came and so forth. But what stood out in their mind was that he wants to be a teacher. And a teacher is somebody very important, you know. There were no black doctors in our neighborhood, no black lawyers, no dentists or whatever. In the nearest town, 18 miles away, there was one or two, and they were mortuary people and so forth. But not uh, uh, the teachers were the ones who dominated the scene. And I recall when I was in the fifth grade um, going to Sunday school, and of course, the, the teacher that I had during the day was right there teaching Sunday school, you know. And I remember one teacher in particular saying, you know, I don't know anybody who's somebody who doesn't have an education or who doesn't go to church. And so that reinforced my father's values. You should stay in church. But it was in church that I learned to talk, to be an orator. The recitations, ever so often we would have to get up and recite poetry and speeches and so forth and so on. So the entire community was a learning place for us in many ways. On Tuesday evenings we had to go to choir practice, junior choir, and, and we had to walk three miles at night to go to choir practice. Thought nothing about it. The dusty roads. But you knew that you were going to leave that community. I knew and my parents kept emphasizing the way out of here is through education. And you had decided, as I understand, that you were going to go to Howard. And I was going to go to Howard. And they actually, the community actually gave you a, a going away party? Gave me a going away party. My aunt, May Ethel Hill, she gave me a going away party and she took three dollars out of her pocket, went up to the nearest neighbor who was um, a white man, uh, Mr. Jones, and didn't ask him to take me to Kings Mountain. She said, now I want you to take my nephew to Kings Mountain. Here's three dollars. And see to it that he gets on the train. And Kings Mountain was about 22 miles from where she lived. The party was the night before. My parents came to the party, went home, told everybody I was going to college. Now, keep in mind, two weeks prior to that, I was going to Shaw University. I had made application to go to Shaw, but I started thinking, well, I really ought to go to Howard. Howard is the best. So I kind of changed my mind overnight. As I said, hadn't made an application, got on the train, went to Howard, came to Howard. Just assuming that you would be able to get in oh, even yes. though you had not actually applied. Just assuming that all I had to do was just go up and walk on the campus, present my uh, report card. I was, after all, the class salutatorian. Uh, out of 24, 18 of us went to college because our teacher said, go to college. As it turned out, I was the only one who graduated from college.